dear students now we will study the organ of taste sensation that is the tongue the taste or gustatory sensation is a chemical sensation and the primary taste sensations are sour sweet bitter and salty in this picture you are seeing the dorsum of the tongue and this is the base of the tongue this is the apex of the tongue and these are the lateral margins of the tongue and you are seeing areas ear mark for the various sensations of taste this is the tip for the zone of sweet sensation and this is the lateral margin you are seeing the zone of salty sensation and as you go posteriorly the zone of sour taste and nearer to the base the zone of the bitter taste now what are taste buds the receptors for the sensation of taste are located in the taste buds then where are these taste buds located so before understanding this taste buds look at this picture this is the picture showing the dorsum of the tongue and the dorsum of tongue is divided into anterior two thirds and posterior one third by means of a sulcus called the sulcus terminalis which is an inverted v shaped sulcus and you are seeing two folds here one is called the palato glossal fold the other is the palato pharyngeal fold what are these folds they are coming from the palate to the tongue that is the palato glossal fold and then there is a fold coming from the palate to the pharynx the lateral wall of pharynx that is known as the palato pharyngeal fold between these two folds will be seen the palatine tonsil so once a person opens the mouth and says ah so that it becomes wider you can identify the dorsum of the tongue and then the difference into anterior two thirds into posterior one third and you can also see these two palate glossal and palato pharyngeal folds and between which the peeping through will be the palate tonsil and still posterior you are seeing the epiglottis which is part of the voice box that is the larynx and coming to the tongue the anterior two thirds you are seeing a midline dividing it into a right half and left half and in front of this sulcus terminalis you are seeing elevations in a row and these are called the papillae the name of which will be the circumvallate papilla and over the dorsum of tongue also you are seeing different types of papillae which we will consider later so why i am talking about the circumvallate papilla is it contains in its walls number of taste buds so they are present in relation with the circumvallate papilla with that contains more in number of taste buds and what will be the number of taste buds they are about 10000 in number and their number decreases with age so these are concerned with taste as they contain the taste receptors the shape of the taste buds they are oval in shape and they are located mainly in the tongue and they are also seen in the soft palate the posterior part of roof of mouth is called the soft palate which contains the taste buds and not only in these two places it's all, they are also seen in the pharynx that is the throat and in the epiglottis the cartilaginous lid over the voice box this also contains the taste buds so the taste buds are about 10000 in number and oval in shape they are located mainly in the tongue and they are also seen in the soft palate pharynx and epi 
grottes. We were mentioning about the tongue. So what is this tongue? Tongue is a mass of striated muscles, that is skeletal muscles, and they are covered by mucous membrane. And we have seen in the previous picture, the tongue is divided into right and left halves by means of a median septum. So the muscles are also divided into the muscles of right half and the muscles of left half. So, what are the parts of the tongue? The tongue is divided, having three parts. One is the root, the other is the tip, and the other one is the body of the tongue. So, what is root of the tongue? Root of tongue is attached to the mandible by means of muscles. So, this part is the root of the tongue, and this is the mandible, and this is the palate. And this part containing the bone is the hard palate and this part is called the soft palate. So now you know what is the root of the tongue. is that part which is attached to the mandible by muscles. The nerves and vessels, they enter through the root of the tongue. Then what is the tip? This is the tip which is the anterior free end of the tongue. This is the body of the tongue. And it has two surfaces. The dorsal surface, which is facing towards the palate. This is the dorsal surface of the tongue. The other one is the ventral surface. This is the ventral surface, which faces the floor of the tongue. If you ask the person to lift his tongue up, so that the tip of it touches the palate, then you can see the ventral surface of the tongue. So, the part of the parts of the tongue are the root, the tip and the body of the tongue. And if you see this part, the body is made up of striated muscles that are covered by mucous membrane and the root of the tongue is the part that is attached to the mandible by muscles. Again, you are seeing the dorsal surface of the tongue. And as already told you, by means of a V-shaped sulcus terminaris, it is divided into anterior two-thirds or oral part and posterior one-third or pharyngeal part. The apex of sulcus terminalis, if you see, this is the apex of the sulcus terminalis. It is facing backwards and it is marked by a pit called the foramen cecum. So, this is the V-shaped sulcus terminalis and this is the apex of it where there is a pit called the foramen cecum. And what is this foramen cecum? embryological remnant and this marks the site of upper end of thyroglossal duct. So the thyroglossal duct will start from the foramen cecum and it goes downwards through the neck region and reaches a particular area where there will be the thyroid cartilage of larynx will be there. There this duct expands and forms the thyroid gland and the original tract of this thyroglossal duct will disappear. So, the importance of foramen cecum is it is a embryological remnant and it marks the site of origin of the or upper end of the thyroglossal duct. So, now you know that it is divided into anterior two thirds and posterior one third and you can observe the circumvallic papilla which I have mentioned in relation with the anterior part of the tongue immediately in front of sulcus terminalis. And you are seeing some other papillae. Just remember those names that is the foliate, the filiform and the fungiform papillae at different parts. 
and you can also observe the paratoglossal fold which I mentioned. You can see it and immediately posterior to it. You are seeing the palatine tonsil and you can observe the epiglottis and there is a depression in the posterior part of the tongue that is called the valicula. If you see the posterior one third of the tongue, it also shows elevations. These are the small lymphatic follicles and this is the also known as the lingual tonsil. Now coming to the anterior two thirds or oral part of the tongue. The mucosa is rough. It is rough in appearance and shows three or four different types of papilla will be seen. But in the case of human beings, three are the active ones. They are the, what are those papillae? You could identify the circumvallate papilla you are seeing. And you know that there is a, this is the lateral margin of the tongue and this is the tip of the tongue. And along this lateral margin, posteriorly, you can see the foliate papilla. And all around this margin, you will be seeing the fungiform papillae. And the rest of the surface is covered with filiform papillae. The posterior one third is known as the pharyngeal part. You will not see any papilla here, but you have seen the nodular surfaces because of the presence of lymphatic nodules on its under surface and they are called the lingual tonsils. In this picture, you can see the dorsal surface of the tongue, the various papillae in relation with the tongue and as you have seen several times, this is the circumvallate papilla. You are seeing with taste buds along its margin. And these are the foliate papilla. The appearance of foliate papilla with the taste buds. The fungiform papilla and the taste buds in relation with the papilla. And the filiform or thread like papilla which are not showing any taste buds. Now, let us discuss the different types of papillae that were mentioned. So, what are papillae? Papillae are elevations on the upper surface or dorsal surface of the tongue and the purpose of which to increase the surface area and to provide a rough texture to upper surface of the tongue. What are the different types of papillae that contain the taste buds which we are going to discuss? So the circumvallate papilla. What do you mean by that papilla? It has got a wall all around with a trench or the gap. That is why it is called the circumvallate valid papillae. This is the circumvallate papilla and you can see the taste buds. Then there is a, another type called the fungiform papillae. They will be like a mushroom. That's why they are called the fungiform papillae. If you see them, it looks like mushroom. They are also having the taste buds. Then the foliate papilla, these are the ones which will be having the taste buds. Now, let us look at the circumvallate papilla. So, this is the area where you are seeing the circumvallate papilla and observe the taste buds along it. And then part of this uh, Test bud projecting towards the oral cavity and the part that is coming in contact with the sensory nerves. The circumvallate papillae, they are about 12 to 15 in number 
they are very large and circular. They are in the form of an inverted V-shaped row at the back of the tongue and each papilla has 100 to 300 taste buds. You can see the circumvallate papillae with the taste buds and then this part which you are seeing where there will be hairs will be present is projecting towards the trench. And the other part is the base and this is the base of the taste bud in relation with which you are seeing the sensory nerve. Then coming to the fungiform papilla, they are mushroom shaped elevations. They are scattered over the entire surface of the tongue and each contains about 5 taste buds. So, on this side, you have learnt about the circumvallate papilla and fungiform papilla. The other papillae are the foliate papilla and the filiform papilla. What is this foliate papilla? They are shaped like a leaf folia, means leaf. And they are located along the lateral margin of the tongue. And most of their taste buds, they degenerate in early childhood. If you see the filiform papilla, filiform means thread-like papilla. They are seen covering the entire surface of the tongue. And they are pointed in structures. They contain tactile receptors, but not taste buds. They increase the friction between the tongue and the food. So that makes it easier for the tongue to move the food around in the oral cavity. So that is about the foliate papilla which are leaf like and the filiform papilla which are thread like. Foliate papilla will have lost their taste buds which can get degenerated in early childhood and filiform papilla they do not contain the taste buds, but they contain the tactile receptors. The function of filiform papilla is to increase the friction between the tongue and food. Now let us come to the receptors of taste sensation that will be present in the taste buds. Let us know the structure of the taste bud. Then we will know what are those taste receptors. And if you see, the taste bud is a vowel structure with three different types of epithelial cells. So what are those three different types of epithelial cells? One is the supporting cell. That means it gives support. Then the other one is the gustatory or taste receptor cells. The third one is the basal cells. Now let us look into the structure of each of them. So you are seeing a vowel body which is having an apical surface and a basal part. And if you see the three different types of cells, you are seeing the supporting cells and then the gustatory receptor cell, the basal cell. Now see the histological picture of the taste bud and focus on the supporting cells. These are the supporting cells and the supporting cells, they contain more number of micro villi and they surround group of gustatory receptor cells. So nearly 50 gustatory re receptor cells they will be surrounding in a taste bud and these supporting cells they develop into gustatory receptor cells and you are seeing the basal cells. These are the stem cells and they produce the supporting cells. Now coming to the 
important one the gustatory receptor cells which are concerned with the sensation of taste and if you observe this gustatory receptor cells these are the oval cells you are seeing and they have a single long gustatory hair that is the microvillus you can see it projecting onto the tongue surface and it is projecting through a pore known as the taste pore which is seen opening on the taste bud and these gustatory receptor cells they are stimulated by the chemicals that are dissolved in saliva on this tongue surface the basis of these cells they synapse with the dendrites of first order neuron in the sensory pathway for the sensation of taste so these are the first order sensory neurons in the gustatory pathway the dendrites of which are seen extending on to the gustatory receptor cells so these will receive the input from the gustatory receptor cells in several taste buds now let us see the gustatory pathway as you have already seen the structure of a taste bud with gustatory cells and the dendrites of first order neuron you are seeing and you know the distribution of the taste buds in relation with the various papillae of the tongue which are located at different areas of the dorsum of the tongue and they are also seen in relation with the epiglottis we will be seeing the gustatory receptor cells which are will be seen in the taste buds then coming to the gustatory pathway then next you are seeing in this picture the cut section of the medulla oblongata and this is the cut section of the brain or cerebrum and you are seeing mosses here they are the thalamus in between you are seeing the cavities of the brain and you can see the various functional areas in the cerebral cortex and how the brain is section you can see the section in the frontal plane and this is the section obtained from the section along the frontal plane now let us see the gustatory pathway so now you know what are gustatory hairs which will be projecting towards the tongue surface and they are coming in contact with the chemical substances or taste ends dissolved in saliva and these dissolved substances they pass through the gustatory hairs and to the base of the gustatory cells where the first order sensory neurons will be placed that is this area from there how the taste sensations will go because the taste buds are present in both in the tongue and then you are seeing it in relation with the throat and epiglottis now see it here follow the arrows from the basis of gustatory cells the axons of the sensory neurons they are passing through the three cranial nerves from different parts the what are those cranial nerves that is the seventh cranial nerve that is facial nerve the ninth cranial nerve known as the glossopharyngeal nerve the tenth cranial nerve known as the vagus nerve where from these nerves receive the sensory information of taste so the areas from which these cranial nerves receive the sensation of taste or one is the tongue the other is the throat and epiglottis 
and as already all of you know that the tongue is divided into anterior two thirds and posterior one third. The sensation from the it is the sensation of taste, the special sensation of taste from the anterior two thirds of the tongue. If you follow the picture, it is going through the facial nerve. Whereas from the posterior one third of the tongue, it is passing through the glossopharyngeal or ninth cranial nerve. From the throat and epiglottis. Now you know what is epiglottis. Throat and epiglottis. Throat means pharynx and epiglottis. It is passing through the vagus nerve. So the cranial nerves, seventh, ninth, and tenth. They carry the sensations of taste from the anterior two thirds, posterior one third of the tongue and the pharynx and epiglottis. So where do these first order sensory neurons go? See the arrows, how they are moving. So they are going to what is known as the gustatory nucleus or tractus solitarius in the medulla. This is the gustatory or the tractus solitarius in the medulla where from the second order neurons will start. And from here, where do they go? They go to an area called amygdala of the limbic system and also to the, the hypothalamus and to the thalamus. So those that are going to the limbic system and hypothalamus also will reach the thalamus which is a mass of nucleus in the cerebral cortex. From where starts the third order neurons? This is the thalamus. From where starts the third order neurons? And from the thalamus, they will be going to the primary gustatory area or area 43 of the parietal lobe. So now you know the gustatory pathway. They will be starting at the gustatory hairs which will be coming in contact with the chemical substances in the saliva and then from there, they will go to the basis of the gustatory cells where first order neurons will be there. And the first order neurons from the different areas of the tongue, that is anterior two thirds and posterior one third, they will be traveling via the facial nerve and the glossopharyngeal nerve. And from the throat and epiglottis via the vagus nerve and they get relayed in the gustatory nucleus in the medulla from which the second order neurons will start and they go towards the thalamus from which the third order neurons start and from there they will go to the primary gustatory area of cerebral cortex it is the area 43 in the parietal lobe. After considering the dorsal surface now let us see the ventral surface. The ventral surface of the tongue is smooth. It means it is without papillae and in the midline it presents a mucosal fold known as the frenulum of the tongue. So this is the frenulum of the tongue which is connecting the tongue to the floor of the mouth lateral to the frenulum through the mucosa veins are seen and these are the deep lingual vein which you are seeing here and later to the deep lingual vein another fold of mucous membrane is seen that is the plica fimbria. The frenulum of the tongue which is seen in the midline is connecting the tongue to the floor of the mouth and in relation with this Frenulum will be the opening of the ducts of the submandibular salivary gland. And later to that, you are seeing the 
a fold called the sublingual fold in relation with which there will be opening of the ducts of the sublingual salivary glands and lateral to the frenulum is the deep lingual vein which is seen through the mucosa and later to the deep lingual vein is the plica fimbriata another fold of mucus membrane after learning about the dorsal and ventral surface of the tongue now let us see the musculature of the tongue the tongue is composed of two types of muscles the intrinsic muscles and extrinsic muscles in this picture you are seeing the tongue this is the dorsal surface this is the ventral surface and this is the mandible and the tongue consisting of the intrinsic muscles which are arranged either longitudinally or transversely and vertically so there is longitudinal muscles the transverse muscles and vertical muscles of the tongue these are the intrinsic muscles and you are seeing other muscles these are the extrinsic muscles which will be attached to this mandible you are seeing the genio hyoid muscle and the genio glossus muscles then coming to the intrinsic muscles they are confined to the tongue and they have no bony attachment and what are those intrinsic muscles they are longitudinal muscles or two groups superior longitudinal and inferior longitudinal muscles there is the transverse muscle you are seeing then the vertically arranged fibers the vertical fibers the function of the intrinsic muscles is to alter the shape of the tongue so for the alterations in the shape of the tongue is due to the intrinsic muscles of the tongue coming to the extrinsic muscles so the extrinsic muscles they are connecting the tongue to the surrounding structures so one is to the soft palate soft palate and then to the mandible the hyoid bone and the styloid process so here you can see the mandible this is the hyoid bone and this is the styloid process you are seeing and then the what are these muscles they are the palato glossus coming from the palate and then there is the genio glossus which you have already seen that muscle coming from the mandible this is the genio glossus and this is the muscle going from the mandible to the hyoid bone then there is the muscle coming from the hyoid to the tongue that is called the hyo glossus and then the muscle coming from the styloid process to the tongue that is the stylo glossus there are some other muscles coming from the styloid process going to the hyoid and then going to the pharynx so the extrinsic muscles of tongue they are connecting the tongue to the surrounding structures the soft palate and to the bones that is the mandible hyoid and styloid process connecting the tongue to the soft palate is the palato glossus connecting to mandible is the genio glossus connecting to hyoid bone is the hyo glossus connecting to stylo glossus the styloid process is the stylo glossus the function of the extrinsic muscles is they will help in movements of the tongue so now you know what are the intrinsic muscles of tongue what are the extrinsic muscles of the tongue in this picture you can revise the intrinsic muscles 
the intrinsic muscles or the superior longitudinal, the inferior longitudinal, the transverse and the vertical muscles. The extrinsic muscles or the palatoglossus, the styloglossus, hyoglossus and genioglossus. And here we are seeing the tongue divided into a right and left parts by means of a sulcus. You are seeing from the dorsal surface and within the substance it is divided by means of a fibrous septum into right half muscles and left half muscles. And another view for understanding the musculature. Now you can see the palate from which comes the palatoglossus muscle. From the styloid process, the styloglossus muscle fibers you are seeing. From the hyoid bone, the hyoglossus muscle fibers going to the tongue. And from the mandible, the genioglossus fibers. Now coming to the nerve supply for the muscles of the tongue, both the intrinsic and extrinsic muscles. The intrinsic muscles are supplied by the hypoglossal nerve, the 12th cranial nerve. You can see it coming here. So all the intrinsic muscles are supplied by the hypoglossal nerve. All the extrinsic muscles except the palatoglossus are supplied by the hypoglossal nerve and the palatoglossus is supplied by the pharyngeal plexus. So, about the motor innervation of the tongue. Now, let us consider the sensory innervation of the tongue because uh, the topic is about the taste sensation. We have to focus more on the sensory innervation. The sensory innervation of the tongue from the anterior two-thirds, posterior one-third and base of it will differ and the one from the anterior two-thirds, posterior one-third and base. If you see, it is what is known as general sensation and special sensation. What is general sensation? The general sensations are that of the pain, temperature, touch, vibration. Those are the general sensations. The special sensations in relation with the tongue is the taste sensation. From the anterior two-thirds of the tongue, the general sensations are carried by the lingual nerve, which is a branch of the mandibular division of the trigeminal nerve. The trigeminal nerve is the fifth cranial nerve. It has got three divisions. They are the ophthalmic division, maxillary division and mandibular division. So, the lingual nerve is a branch of the mandibular division and it carries the general sensations from the anterior two-thirds of the tongue. The special sensation of taste is carried by the corda tympani branch of facial nerve and you have seen the pathway for the taste sensation that is carried through the facial nerve. Regarding the posterior one third of the tongue, both the general and special sensations are carried by the glossopharyngeal nerve, which is the ninth cranial nerve. And the area by the glossopharyngeal nerve includes the circumvallate papillae. Coming to the base of the tongue, both general and special sensations are carried by the internal laryngeal nerve, which is a branch of the 10th cranial nerve, that is the vagus nerve. In this picture, you can see the motor innervation. Also, all the muscles of tongue except palatoglossus are supplied by the hypoglossal nerve or the 12th cranial nerve. The palatoglossus receives its innervation from the cranial root of accessory nerve via the vagus nerve. 
So now you know about the motor and sensory innervations of the tongue. The arteries supplying the tongue are the branches of external carotid artery. They are the lingual artery. You can see the branches supplying the tongue. And the other one is the facial artery, the tonsillar branches of which supply the tongue. Then the branches from the ascending pharyngeal artery. The venous drainage of the tongue is by the lingual vein which ultimately drains into the internal jugular vein. Coming to the lymphatic drainage of the tongue. The tip of the tongue drains into the submental lymph nodes of both sides and from the submental lymph nodes they drain into the deep cervical nodes which you are seeing here in relation with the carotid artery and the internal jugular vein and the lymph nodes from the anterior two-thirds of the tongue they drain into the submandibular group of lymph nodes of that side and then to the deep cervical chain of lymph nodes. The lymph nodes from the posterior third of the tongue they will be draining towards the deep cervical nodes mainly the jugulo digastric nodes. So the lymph nodes concerned with the drainage of the tongue or the submental lymph nodes, submandibular lymph nodes which ultimately will be draining into the deep cervical lymph nodes. Now let us see what is the clinical importance of the taste pathway and the sensation of taste because the main topic for today's discussion is the concerned with the sensa special sensation of taste and in relation with that the tongue we have considered. What is agusia? It is the absence of taste sensation and this is due to damage of lingual nerve or glossopharyngeal nerve. Then the other condition is dysgeusia. It is unpleasant perception of taste. And with this, you must be having an idea about the taste sensation, what are the different taste sensations and what are the places over the tongue where these sensations can be perceived and the receptors of taste sensation that are located in the taste buds which are seen in relation with the various papillae on the dorsum of the tongue and in relation with epiglottis and the pharynx and the various orders of neurons in the taste pathway that is the first order neurons in relation with the gustatory receptor cells and then the second order neurons in the gustatory nucleus in the medulla and the third order neurons in the thalamus and the nerves that carry the sensations of taste from the anterior two-thirds, the posterior one-third and base of the tongue we have seen and then we have considered the musculature of the tongue, both the intrinsic and extrinsic muscles of the tongue, their motor and sensory innervation, blood supply and lymphatic drainage in brief and the applied aspect of sensation of taste.